it's finally conference championship weekend. And while that does mean that college football is sadly slowly coming to an end, this is also one of the best weekends of the entire year. And today, guys, we are here to break down and predict the five group of five conference champions heading in to this weekend. Tomorrow, we will begin individual videos for every single Power Five conference championship, such as Georgia, Alabama, Washington, Oregon, and many others. We're going to have all those covered going down the stretch, but today, solely focusing on the group of five. So again, welcome back to the Gridiron Expert. We're so glad that you could join us today, as always. Please continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos, and check out everything down in the description below, including our holiday special over on the gridironexpert.com, where you will receive every spread pick for every college football championship game, every college football bowl game, and every NFL playoff game. So every college football game for the rest of the year, you will get that spread pick, and you will get every NFL playoff pick as well. We are hitting over 60% of our bets this season. We have hit over 60% of our postseason bets each of the last five years. So if you want guaranteed winnings, if you want these picks for the lowest price in the entire country, because we can guarantee no other outlet can guarantee this type of record and this type of price, then go sign up. The link down in the description below and become a member of our GE Nation. So let's dive into these picks here. We have got some great games on here. I know the SEC Championship, the Pac-12 Championship, those games are going to you know, take higher priority for some people, but these games are going to be a lot of fun. We'll start up at the top. Friday night, the Conference USA Championship game. What a story for both of these programs. New Mexico State at number 20 Liberty. These rankings based on the AP poll. Remember that. But both of these, unreal stories. New Mexico State in at 10-3, and three, having their first 10-win season since 1960 when they went 11-0. and 0. They're going to be going to their back-to-back -back bowl game, second straight bowl game for the first time since 1959 and 1960. Jerry Kill, what he has done with the Aggies is truly unbelievable. I mean, he should literally be a candidate for Coach of the Year. He's not going to get that award or get that recognition because he's coaching the Conference USA, but what a turnaround for this program. He's 17-9 and nine over the last two years. Keep in mind, New Mexico State won just 18 games between 2016 and 2021. Absolutely unbelievable story. Liberty, on the other hand, Jamie Chadwell comes in, first-year head coach from Coastal Carolina, leads the Flames to a perfect 12-0 record. They have not missed a beat. Hugh Freeze was great with them. Jamie Chadwell continuing that success, the first-ever undefeated se season for the Flames. These two teams did meet earlier in the year in Conference USA play, Liberty winning that game 33-17. They trailed New Mexico State 17-13 with 5-18 remaining in the first half. And then the Aggies did not score again. Liberty ended up pulling away. In that game, the Flames had 276 passing yards, 250 rushing yards. Last week against UTEP, the Flames had 441 rushing yards against the Miners. This is a great quarterback battle. Diego Pavia at New Mexico State. Caden Slater at Liberty. Both throwing for over 2,400 yards and over 24 touchdowns. It's unbelievable. But... Got to side with Liberty here. This is a team that I think is going to be able to pound the rock continuously, just like they did against Mexico State in the first meeting, just like they did against UTEP. The running game is going to be key for the Flames. They get it going. They own the offensive edge, the defensive edge slightly, and they own home field advantage, which is huge here. Keep in mind, Liberty is 31-6 at home since 2018. They're dang near unstoppable. The game will be close. It will be closer than the first meeting. But Liberty wins the game, remains undefeated, and keeps their small hopes alive for maybe slipping in to a New Year's Six Bowl game. We'll talk to that shortly. Miami, Ohio against Toledo in Detroit. Toledo cracking the AP Top 25 at number 23. These two records are unbelievable. You know, back in the preseason, we, we talked about the MAC and we said we felt pretty confident that it would probably be Miami, Ohio, or Ohio against Toledo. Toledo felt like it was going to be a given to make the MAC championship game. It was going to be a race between the Red Hawks and the Bobcats, and Miami, Ohio ultimately got that win. 10 and 2 for Miami, Ohio, 11 and 1 for Toledo. Miami, Ohio's only losses coming to Miami, like the Hurricanes, and Toledo by four earlier in the year. Toledo's only loss back in week one, a two-point, some would say controversial loss to Illinois. Since then, the Rockets have won 11 straight games. In that game between Toledo and Miami, Ohio earlier in the year, Miami, Ohio quarterback Brett Gabbert was injured, and Avion Smith had to come in to the game, finish it out, and he's been the starter for the remainder of the year. 500 passing yards, only two rush, uh, passing touchdowns, 181 rushing yards. This is a Red Hawks team that primarily wants to run the ball. They average over 160 rushing yards per game, and they want to play st stingy defense. That's how Miami, Ohio has gotten to this point. They're not flashy on offense or anything like that. 
They pound the rock, they own the time of possession, and they have a defense that ranks top 25 nationally. That's going to be a really tough test, though, against a Toledo offense that's loaded. Averaging over 430 yards per game, Daquan Finn, one of the more experienced quarterbacks in the conference, over 2,400 yards and 21 touchdowns. Penny Boone has over 1,300 rushing yards and 15 touchdowns. Toledo as a whole, averaging over 212 rushing yards per game. The way I look at this, guys, the Rockets have the significantly better offense. They have a defense that can match Miami, Ohio's. Toledo has been here before. Miami, Ohio won the conference just a few years ago. Toledo, in their second straight championship game, they know what it takes. They're one of the hottest teams, not just in the MAC, but maybe in the entire country. The game is close, just like the first meeting back in October. Toledo, though, gets the win again, and they win their second straight MAC title to finish the year at 12 and 1. What a year for the Rockets! Boise State at UNLV, the Mountain West Championship game. Another phenomenal story across the board here. You've got the perennial power in Boise State who's playing in their sixth Mountain West Championship in the last seven years versus the biggest surprise in the Mountain West, one of the biggest surprises in all of college football in UNLV who is having their first nine-win season. They're nine and three, first nine-win season since 1984 under first-year head coach Barry Odom. I mean, what a story. So you've got Barry Odom going up against a Boise State team left for dead, fires Andy Avalo. Spencer Danielson is promoted to be interim head coach. They're 2-0 under Danielson, and because of the computer tiebreakers, Boise State finds themselves competing for a championship game. And look, if Danielson wins this and maybe wins the bowl game, he could get that interim tag removed. This is going to be a very fun offensive game, both teams averaging over 32 points per game. The keys in this one, Boise State's rushing attack, averaging over 207 rushing yards per game, led by Ashton Genty, who has over 1,100 rushing yards. That rushing game versus UNLV's rushing defense that's allowing 152 rushing yards per game. And then conversely, UNLV's offense that does average nearly 200 rushing yards per game of themselves, but a passing attack that's hoping to exploit a Boise State defense that's 116th versus the pass, giving up 254 passing yards per game. And Jaden Mavia, uh, or excuse me, Mayava, has been phenomenal this year. Ricky White has been phenomenal this year. 1,300 yards, seven touchdowns on the year at wide receiver. And keep in mind, UNLV, they're 9-3. and three. Their three losses are to Michigan, a seven-point loss to Fresno State, and a six-point loss last week to San Jose State. This UNLV team's the real deal. At home, looking for a conference championship, a 10-win season. Give me UNLV to pull off the minor upset. They're not even favored in this game, but give me UNLV, the running Rebels, to beat Boise State and capture a Mountain West championship. Unreal season for the Rebels. The American Championship. This is the best group of five championship out there, no doubt about it. And the AP decided to rank both of these teams, SMU coming in at 25, Tulane in at 17. This is massive. Not only is it going to be a great game, but it's massive when it comes to the New Year's Six Bowl hopes. Tulane wins this game. They're going to a New Year's Six Bowl game. It doesn't matter what Liberty does. It doesn't matter what Tulane or Toledo does. Tulane wins. They're going back to a New Year's Six Bowl game for the second year in a row. If SMU wins, that's where things get interesting. Depending on where the playoff committee ranks SMU, if they even do at all, will a win for SMU on the road be enough to get them the New Year's Six Bowl berth? Or if Liberty wins, will they go to a New Year's Six Bowl game? Or if Liberty loses, could Toledo get into a New Year's Six Bowl game? So many possibilities here if Tulane loses this game. But I'm here to tell you that I don't think they will. I don't think we're going to have Group of Five chaos when it comes to that New Year's Six Bowl. Tulane will win this game. Both teams are phenomenal. SMU's only two losses, Oklahoma and TCU. Tulane's only loss to Ole Miss. So these teams have lost to Power Five teams. They both went undefeated in conference play. And it's a battle between SMU's offense that's averaging 293 passing yards per game with Preston Stone, who's been phenomenal, over 3,200 yards, against a Tulane defense that just forced five turnovers against UTSA last week. That's what I'm looking at here. The SMU offense versus the Tulane defense. And here's the thing. Tulane guys, you, they've got a phenomenal defense. I'll give them that, right? But the offense can match SMU. Michael Pratt is a veteran quarterback. He was playing phenomenal football. The rushing attack was phenomenal last week against a good UTSA team, rushing for over 225 yards. This Tulane defense, guys, is sixth in the nation versus the run, allowing just 86 rushing yards per game. They're giving up just 328 yards per game as a whole. They're at home where they've been dang near unstoppable over the last few years under Willie Fritz. Give me the green wave to have another big defensive performance. They slow down this SMU passing attack in Tulane in a close, close game. Survives at home. They are back in a New Year's Six Bowl game, finishing the year at 12-1. and What a run for 
the Green Wave guy. Seriously, unbelievable run for Willie Fritz and this program. And then finally, the last group of five game we got up here at State at Troy, the Sun Belt Championship at State, eight and four. Troy coming in at ten and two, second year in a row that Troy is not only hosting the Sun Belt Championship game, but they're looking to win the Sun Belt Championship. Beat Coastal Carolina last year, now looking to get back-to-back conference championships. The Trojans last year finished twelve and two. This year they're ten and two, with their only losses to Kansas State and a two-point loss to James Madison. Nothing to hang your hat on there or be upset about there. They've dominated every single game since that James Madison lost. Absolutely dominated. App State, they're looking for their first conference title since 2019. They were 3-4 and four early in the year, but then won out the rest of the way. And, they, and that includes a road win over previously unbeaten James Madison. So the Mountaineers are no joke. They can win on the road. They have the confidence. They have the ability to win games like this. The Mountaineers averaging over 450 yards per game. But they're facing up against a stingy Troy defense at 12th in the country, allowing just 300 yards per game. Something's got to give here. Ultimately, I think it's the App State offense that gives. Troy defense at home is simply too good. The most points that the Trojans have allowed in conference play was 24. That's it. They have not allowed over 24 points in conference play all year long. And while Joey Aguilar at App State has been phenomenal, over 3,200 yards and 33 touchdowns, he's going to have to carry this game because Troy's defense isn't going to allow the Mountaineers to run on them. Troy's got a veteran quarterback in Gunnar Watson. They've got Kamani Vidal at running back over 1,300 yards this year. Troy simply is too talented, too experienced, have home field advantage. They own the defense advantage. Might be relatively close, but give me the Trojans to win this game, win their second straight Sun Belt Championship, get their second straight 11-win season, and looking to make it their second straight 12-win season if they can win their bowl game. John Summerall, guys, he's a guy, he's a guy that's going to be on a lot of lists for new coaches this year because he has done a phenomenal job turning this Troy program around and they will win their second straight conference title. So there you go, guys. Week 14 conference championship predictions in the group of five. Leave your predictions and thoughts in the comments below. First one starts on Friday night, New Mexico State and Liberty. The rest of these on Saturday. But going to be some fantastic football being played. Massive games for some of these programs that have not had much success in recent years. Massive storylines when it comes to the New Year's Six Bowl race. These games are ones that, again, are going to get overshadowed, but they don't need to be. These are appointment viewing games. So keep your eye on them. Get ready for an epic college football weekend. And of course, again, starting tomorrow, we will have the Power Five predictions starting right here on the channel. Every single one predicted individually, deep in-depth analysis. Do not miss out on those. But in the meantime, please continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos, and of course, check out everything down in the description below, including our expert picks, including our holiday special, the link directly below. Go sign up for those today so you can get the spread picks for every conference championship game, every college football bowl game, and every NFL playoff game. Do not miss out on that offer. And once again, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time right here on The Gridiron Expert. (laughs) 